Hey, all y'all. Yes, I do say all y'all. You're probably used to it by now. Anyway, it's me, Pastor Renee, once again. And I'm here for another round of scripture and sermon. The title of today's sermon is Commanded to Love. This is a little little thing I learned, uh, the South Korean dramas that I watch. Yes, I'm admitting it. Uh, they have, they're good. What can I say? They're really good. Um, but anyway, this is like the symbol for love because it's like got like the, the round, uh, tops of the heart on your fingers. So they do that a lot. Anyway, that's enough about me and my habits. Ah, let's talk about a different habit that maybe we could get into, and that's love. First, let's read from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. And here the Apostle Paul says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Doesn't he make it sound so simple? And do this he says, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because your salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Well, that's all from Paul. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, my question of the day is, have you ever paid off a debt? I'm guessing you probably have. Whether it was a home loan, a student loan, a vehicle loan, or just bumming 20 bucks for lunch, I think we've all borrowed money and then paid it back. At least I hope you've paid it back. So do you remember how you felt when you repaid that debt? Ah, oh. I mean, not that we had any difficulty breathing before, but in a way, once that loan was paid back, we could breathe easier. A burden had been lifted and it felt freeing, right? Ah. Oh. But there is one debt that our scripture reading today tells us we will never be able to be out from under. And that's to love one another. The command to love one another isn't anything new for us believers. Back in the Old Testament, God commanded his people in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So there was no being, you know, mistaken as to who he was. Also, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 19, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus also said in the book of Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these 
to command. Unquote. These commandments to love are exactly where Paul was referencing when he told his audience, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. So how is love a debt? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh -huh. Yeah, the reason we are to love others is because God has loved us so abundantly, so overwhelmingly, that it wells up inside of us and it just like comes out. If we've experienced love from God, others should experience love from us. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to God, to share that love with others. Paul says in verse 10, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. What law? Well, children, please realize that when God says something, it's the law. Okay? We got that, right? All right. And Christians aren't the only ones who are commanded to love. In fact, love is a universal theme found in all of the major world religions. Now, with the population of the planet being 7.888 billion, and the major world religions claiming 78% of that population as their membership, you'd think our planet would be brimming with Love! Hello! Has that been your experience? Hmm? Yeah. Maybe not. If every person who considers themselves to be loyal to their religion treated everyone they met with love, You'd think we'd be living in some sort of a utopia by now. What would the world look like if 78% of its population actually obeyed God's command to love? Would the divorce rate go down? Would wars end? Would the hungry be fed? Would prisons be empty? Just think of what our tax dollars could be used for if there was no need for prisons, courtrooms, or military armament. We could clean up the environment, house the homeless, and offer free university education. The possibilities are endless. And yet, here we are. So, what does love look like? Love does no wrong to another. Love is compassion for the seen and unseen struggles of others. Love is intentional. We must mindfully put on the armor of Jesus, the armor of light, and shine with Jesus' love and truth and not our own. Love is discarding darkness and the temptation of sinful behavior. Love is walking in the way that God has created us to live. Then, let us be called to action in order to fulfill God's command to love. Show love to others. Can you forgive someone? Can you help someone in need? Can you encourage someone? Can you be generous to someone in word or deed? In all that you do, be intentional and love on purpose. Owe no man anything but to love one another. 
Paul says very plainly that we are to think of this as our obligation to everyone. I wonder what kind of radical things would start happening among us if we were to start living on this basis. Every day, every person we would meet, we would say to ourselves first, being intentional, I need to show some love to this person. No matter what else happens, I have an obligation to pay them this debt. May this be our goal as we obey God's command to love, which is best for us, best for the kingdom of God, and best for our earthly home. Praise be to God. And amen.